A while back I made a video talking about what many people considered to be the greatest Dragon Ball fan manga, Multiverse. In that video I criticised the manga for some well known issues, and since then numerous new chapters have been released but unfortunately, it seems they all have the same problem as before. So in this video I'm going to go in depth a little bit more and talk about the three big issues with this manga, in my opinion at least, and also talk about a little bit of history to start off. Before I start, this isn't a rip on the authors, I'm not trying to encourage any type of hatred, this is just criticism. The manga was initially published in 2008 and currently has 99 chapters and over 2000 pages. The story follows a multiversal tournament with the participants being characters from different what if situations. For example, what if Vegito never unfused, what if Majin Buu or Bojack won, so on and so forth. It also does not consider Dragon Ball Super to be canon, rather it takes from the original Dragon Ball Z story and adds certain things to create its own lore. Although there have been some guest appearances such as Beerus as a sort of reference. With all that said, let's talk about the three main issues now. And the first one is, in my opinion, pacing. The manga has an update schedule of about three pages a week, which I don't think is necessarily bad. Me personally, I would prefer it all in one go, like traditional manga. But yeah, that's not really a bad thing, it's more of like a personal preference. What can be criticised though is the fact that the main story keeps being interrupted by side stories. These side stories are often unnecessary or, in general, just really badly timed. We could be in the middle of a really important or really big fight in the tournament, and in the middle of that fight, or towards the end, we are interrupted with a story on a completely unrelated universe. It doesn't make much sense and it's really just a hindrance. Because what they could do instead is have a separate section of the website for side stories, or even just, you know, here's a better idea, time these stories correctly to like when the specific individuals from these universes are fighting. In any case, characters that require that little bit extra of a backstory or exposition are not provided that opportunity. Instead, we're given stuff like back-to-back -back chapters on future trunks, how he gets to the tournament, and his reaction to certain villains that are in the tournament like Cell. It's really just unnecessary. But we now move to the second area of concern, which is character assassination. And boy, is this a big one. I'm gonna give three different examples on some really strangely and just badly written characters. Let's start with a less obvious one than many avid readers would notice. Future Trunks. This version of Trunks finds Android 16 in his timeline, and these two along with Future Bulma work to restore the Earth. For both the main timeline and the future timeline, this tournament happens well after the Cell Saga, I should point that out. The reason I'm saying this is because it ties into my main issue with this version of Trunks. He never surpassed Super Saiyan. You're telling me he had all of these years and still never managed to unlock even Super Saiyan 2? And what's worse is the solution that the authors have come up for him. They've got him to quote unquote, master the bulky Super Saiyan transformation that he used against Perfect Cell. Technically this isn't a new tactic, we've seen Vegeta do this against Goku Black in the Dragon Ball Super manga, but the tactic makes sense in the manga. It doesn't make sense here in this fan manga. It just seems as if they're unnecessarily shafting future trunks. And what's more, they've written him out nearly 600 pages into the manga, and besides that one fight, he doesn't really have much of an impact to the main story. Against people like Ghast and Vegito, he's not going to be able to do anything against them. This is mainly a point for Vegito, but I'll get to that later. To summarize this area for trunks, they've just made him really weak for no reason, it makes him seem really dumb, and they've written him out very quickly for no reason, so he has no real impact to the story. Which sucks because he's a fan favourite character and he's getting shafted. On the topic of fan favourite characters who get shafted, Vegito. This is a very, very controversial version of Vegito. He's from a universe where he never unfused against Majin Buu and he defeated him without resorting to the spirit bomb or anything like that, which means that the Vegeta side of him never had the opportunity to have that self-reflection moment. Or in other words, that you are number one speech. So because this Vegeta never found peace like he did in the original timeline, this Vegito, the result in fusion, has some unresolved anger issues. Although I personally don't think they should be unresolved. Keep in mind, I think that the anger issues are great. That's fair, right? It's great to have that kind of internal issue. It's something interesting. But think about it this way. From the time of the ending of the Majin Buu saga to the tournament, 
Why wouldn't this Vegito have figured out how to control himself? I mean, we see him lecture this one character I'll mention later on about how to control her anger issues. But then we randomly have this side of him which makes him look like a hypocrite, which is what Gotenks from his universe points out later on. This all happens after Vegito has an amazing fight with Broly, but also after an embarrassing loss very easily to this XXI magician or whoever this character is. His behavior has been the topic of many heated fan debates. It's really bad, I'll be honest, and it just seems like bad writing because this he's supposed to be the perfect fighter, right? He's supposed to be a perfect warrior, a combination of Goku and Vegeta. I understand it can combine their strengths and weaknesses, but he should have had the time to overcome these weaknesses. We now move to arguably the worst character in this manga, the daughter of Vegito, Sun Bra. People despise this character, and I do too. Although, the reason people hate her is generally a bit different. Some people think she's a Mary Sue, other people just think she's badly written, and I personally think she's a combination of a bit of both, to be honest. But to some background, she was born with a power level higher than Broly's, which makes sense. So from a young age, she's very powerful, has Super Saiyan, but unfortunately, she has a hard time grasping morals, as messed up as that sounds. And some quick clarification for those that think she can't be that powerful from a young age. The author confirmed that Goku and Vegeta will always be weaker than Gohan, who had his power unlocked. Which is incredibly dumb. I don't know how that's the case, because that's not how <laughs> Zenkai's work, but you know what? It's their manga, it's their lore, I'm not going to say anything further. Moving on. That is the explanation for her power. In regards to her personality, she's always had rage issues like Kid Gohan, but worse. So when she turns Super Saiyan 2, she destroys everything around her. And the first time she did that, she killed her brother, Goten. I'm not exaggerating, that's what happened. In this particularly dark chapter, we have the first glimpse of Vegito feeling the need to protect the universe from his daughter. And it's very justified. This is technically a traumatic experience for Bra because, I mean, it's her own father telling her that he needs to take her out for the sake of the universe if she can't control herself. I will add that that chapter, like many others, seems to want the reader to feel sorry for some Bra, but it backfires because why should we? We are given very little reason to actually like this character. In fact, we're given more reasons to dislike her and view her as a threat. We then move to the tournament where Barbody tries to take control of the universes and the multiple sets of Dragon Balls, and it almost fails. Everyone else was killed, Cell betrayed Barbody and was on the quote-unquote good side the whole time, and baited Gohan into beefing him up, so to speak. And Barbody was about to be killed by one of the versions of Gohan. And then out of nowhere, Sambra is revealed to be a Majin. And also out of nowhere, she can control Super Saiyan 2 without going berserk. Like, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say about this writing. It's very confusing. It's hard for me to imagine the authors sitting down, reviewing the story and thinking, yes, this makes sense. The readers are gonna love this. No, no we didn't. So Bra becomes a Margin, destroys literally everyone, she splits her own brother in half with a key sword. She atomizes Cell completely, killing him. And you might be wondering, how is she stopped? Did Vegito stop her? No. The son Bra from the main universe, Universe 18, goes up to her and talks her down in the stupidest manner possible. So Margin Bra says, you don't know what it's like. I've had a really hard life and all of this other rubbish. Shut up! And so after this, this also ties back to Vegito's character as well. I'm sort of linking these two. You might recall earlier that I mentioned a part about a different chapter where Vegito tells Bra that he needs to take her out if she doesn't control herself. This was shown purely as an excuse to make Vegito a villain in the eyes of Bra and, apparently, the readers. It didn't work, I'll tell you that now. Keep in mind that this same chapter I'm talking about shows Bra killing the villains, killing her own brother, destroying an alien planet and the son of that alien planet, essentially dooming that part of the universe. Now again, she was out of control. So when Vegito knocks her out and waits for her to wake up, and when he tells her about all of the things that she's done, her initial response is, oh, I'm stronger than Gohan now. 
Are you fucking kidding me? Essentially, Vegito sees her as a second Broly, which is fair. It is astounding that the creators of the manga would expect us to have any kind of sympathy for Bra after what she did at a young age and not showing any kind of remorse. After this Margin attack, everybody comes back, finds out what happened, and true to his word, Vegito attacks Bra trying to kill her. And this results in Vegito being depowered by Ghast and just hated on by everyone. The writing is so horribly inconsistent that at one point Bra says, it's my fault, kill me, to, oh wait, you thought I did this voluntarily? And the other Bra has a change in personality as well, for some reason. And despite not being a trained fighter, she now says, this Bra can now use Super Saiyan 2 perfectly, out of nowhere. I mean, look at this comment right here. Why can Bra control Super Saiyan 2 now? Good question. Why should marginalization have anything to do with that? It's not supposed to. It didn't cure Kakarot's madness. True statement. Why should succumbing to someone else's control grant personal control? That's the opposite. That's not what happens. <laughs> it's crazy. And they make a really good observation here. Bra has only gotten permanent positives from marginalization and killing everyone. I mean, think about that. You succumb to mind control, kill your family and friends and people you know, and then at the end of it, you just get positives. You don't have any backlash. There's no consequences. Somehow it also gets worse because now we have this moment where Universe 18 bra says Universe 16's bra broke Barbie's control on her own, which is not true because Universe 18 bra was the one to quote, snap her out of it. So to summarize, what we have here is basically Universe 18's bra absolutely retconning her one good moment in this entire manga. We also have Vegito's actions being labeled as attempted murder, which is pretty rich because in an earlier chapter, he thought that she could not be marginalized at all. And these two photos were in the comments and I think these perfectly sum up what many people think about this chapter and this writing. It's just absolutely ridiculous. But now we finally move to the third main issue in this manga, which is a lack of quality. Now this sort of relates to the bad writing and it sort of doesn't, but I'll give two main examples. And the first one is rather a shame because this character was teased in the opening stages of the manga and unfortunately they've had a rather minuscule effect on the plot as a whole. I'm referring to this Ikul character. So Ikul's observed all the evil doings and all this bad stuff happening through the tournament and minutes after being born decides let's kill everyone and destroy everything here. They use this time stop technique and it works on everyone except for the cybernetic beings like the androids. We then proceed to get one of the coolest moments in the manga, which is giving Yamcha some respect. And apart from that, there's not much else that happens with this character, which is rather strange. Like you have this massively hyped up, all powerful character and they just don't do anything? They fight Yamcha, destroy a few people, they all get healed at the end anyway, and that's it? What exactly was the planning process? like? What was this character supposed to do besides giving us a cryptic warning about a character whom we're already suspicious of? Not really much else to say about that character, but let's move on to chapter 99. It's a special involving the future timeline, and specifically the character of Fortune Teller Baba. We have Master Roshi and future Gohan visiting a dead Fortune Teller Baba in her palace, and they manage to talk with Goku with her crystal ball, but before they can actually get some help, Baba disconnects the call and says, the dead must not interfere with the world of the living. A complete 180 of her original character where the dead did interfere with the living world. Where did this come from? And despite the destruction of the world and the deaths of literally every single other Z fighter, Baba just gives Gohan a rude gesture and disappears? And on the very next page, Gohan is just not wanting to fight anymore. He just wants to rejoin his friends in the afterlife. What kind of silly misrepresentation is this supposed to be? And in case you're wondering, yes, the comments did say the exact same thing. Realistically, this third main point is a combination of everything else that's wrong. We have a character assassination of Baba and Gohan. We have a lack of quality in regards to the main points of the original manga that build up this multiverse manga. The best word I can use to describe the state of this manga currently is it's a mess. It's just a mess. When you put all of this time and energy into creating such a massive project, the least you can do is respect the source material. And in my personal opinion, 
I don't feel like that's happening here. There's a lot in this manga that's really well written and actually really nice to see. We've had some great moments and fights, but there's also a lot that's really badly written and very controversial. But what do you guys think? Have you read the manga? Are you considering reading it? Or have you given up reading it entirely? Let me know in the comments below and have a good one.